Welcome everyone. Please stand and welcome the Boston EMS Academy Class 2022-1. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Boston EMS Honor Guard. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will Superintendent Len Chubatowski please come to the podium for the singing of our national anthem? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Superintendent. I invite Bishop William Dickinson II of Greater Love Tabernacle to the stage for the invocation. To uh, Chief Hooley and to uh, Chief uh, Bazola and to our Honorable Mayor and to everyone here, and with respect to all faith traditions, let's bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together, Lord, to witness this graduation ceremony 
for a new class of EMTs that show hit the streets of Boston. Father, we pray that you will bless this gathering. We invoke your presence even now. And we pray, dear God, that you would, Lord, watch over the, the, the EMTs as they go about their daily duties. Father, because often they, don't get, they do not get the credit for lives saved. Many lives have been saved because of their diligence, because of their assistance. And Father, we just pray that you will bless them, bless their families. We pray, dear God, that you'll bless, Lord, the entire EMS staff, the instructors, and those who work together, Lord, in a way that will uplift this city. Bless our mayor. Bless all those that gather together in this space, Lord, to uh, recognize this new recruit class. We ask that your presence be with us and that your peace will bound throughout this city. Let peace prevail in the midst of all the chaos that's going on throughout the world and even our city. We pray for your peace to prevail with respect to all faith traditions. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Bishop Dickerson. The honor guard, uh, please, please let me stay uh, for the dismissal of the honor guard. Please be seated. Okay. Well, good morning. Welcome, everyone. May Wu, Bob, Boston Fire Car Commissioner Burke. Thank you for, uh, for coming. Our executive, our executive director. Dr. Ojikuru, BPPA EMS Division President Anderson, our Academy staff, the lead FTOs, FTOs, department members, families, friends, and uh, I hope I didn't leave anyone out. On behalf of the men, all the men and women of Boston EMS, I wish to thank you for joining us here today as we formally acknowledge several recently promoted members and the graduation of 19 recruits into our ranks as Boston EMS emergency medical technicians. To our newly promoted members, congratulations. Thank you for taking on your new responsibilities and duties. Seven EMTs were recently promoted to lieutenant. These members bring skill, experience, leadership to their new roles as supervisors. Five new paramedics have been promoted from the rank of EMT. They are all prepared to offer advanced levels of emergency medical care to the most ill or injured patients that they will encounter. Four of our four are, were recently promoted to deputy superintendent. They are joining our command staff and will lead and manage areas of our department. Two have been promoted to the rank of superintendent, where they are now in se senior leadership roles. For today's graduates, it's been a long road to this point. Before even applying to work at Boston EMS, these recruits had first to become EMTs, and you got certified as EMTs. From there, you were required to pass both a written and practical exam, as well as an oral interview. Upon hire as recruits, you were again tested for three months in the classroom, then three more months in the field doing real calls where you applied your skills and knowledge under the guidance and mentoring of your field training officers. 
You received instruction in anatomy, physiology, treatment of all manner of medical and trauma emergencies, infectious diseases, mass casualty care, including medical care at hazardous materials operations, operating under force protection or the Boston Police Department to access victims at mass shootings or active shooting scenes, and emergency vehicle operations. Over the last three months, as I mentioned, you were in the field doing real calls and real, real trucks. You, it was, you, you didn't get to pick and choose the calls you were going for. You were, you were going to the mall. And uh, this group of 19 that you all see seated here today, over the last three months, have uh, documented that they responded to over 3,072 various emergency medical encounters, including 247 reports of cardiac disorders, 228 behavioral health emergencies, 1,100 um, illness, various illnesses, 352 injuries, uh, which included uh, 80 motor vehicle accidents, 35 pedestrians struck, 60 overdoses, 246 respiratory disorders, 92 seizure patients, seven uh, persons uh, suffering gunshot wounds, seven persons stabbed, 44 stroke patients. And that's just a partial list of what you've already accomplished and you've already, the experience you've already gained. Many of you have already experienced saving a life and others have sadly been there when a life has been lost. Throughout the process, members of our training academy have been there with you to help you learn from each experience and patient encounter. Class 2022-1, you've proven that you are now ready to represent our department with pride and professionalism while you treat your patients with kindness and compassion. You are ready to respond in all locations, at all hours, in all conditions. Resuscitating a patient from near death, clearing the airway of a choking person, preventing shock or providing care in a dangerous setting are examples of not giving up on a patient. And I ask you to remember that you must fight just as hard and not give up on the patient who suffers from a chronic disease or the patients with substance abuse disorder have mental illness and may be chronically homeless. It may in many ways, that requires as much skill, courage, and effort on your part. We may encounter any one of those patients on hundreds of occasions. You never know when that one call will be the one day that you, that patient finally turns it around. I've heard many people who have made it to long-term recovery say that they almost gave up on, numerous, on themselves on numerous occasions, but the fact that others would not give up on them is what got them through and made the difference. To the graduates, this is now your department. You've been here six months. You are the patients, your patients, you are the people that we've all been waiting for. And I mean it. We couldn't have promoted all these fine individuals over here if you hadn't come on board. And we couldn't move this department forward or in an attempt to drill, fill extra trucks and take on more duties if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Where have you been? We've been waiting for you. And there's another recruit class in behind you, and we're trying to fill another one. So we're going to ask you all to take your part and have to shape this. Don't be intimidated or shy when you look around at these new promotees or other senior members of the department. You've now joined their ranks. Sure, you should respect them for what they've contributed, but you now have as much claim to Boston EMS being your department as any one of us standing here today. Do your part, build our department, make all of us better, please. While a career in EMS is rewarding, it does have its risks and its exposure to danger. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and thank you for your commitment to Boston EMS. I wish you all long, safe, and rewarding careers. This time, it's my honor to call to the podium the Executive Director of the Boston Public Health Commission, Dr. Basola Ojikutu.
Thank you, Chief Hooley, for your kind introduction and for your leadership of Boston EMS. Thank you, Bishop Dickerson, for your invocation, and thank you to Mayor Wu for joining us. To the graduating EMS recruits and the members of Boston EMS who've been promoted, you all have chosen very challenging, yet very gratifying careers. You obviously provide essential medical care and manage really critical medical situations and really deal with life or death, but just as importantly, you are oftentimes the sole source of comfort to our residents when they are at their most vulnerable. And it's at those moments that the little things that you do, the things that you probably just do without even thinking about it every single day that make a difference. I was lucky enough to see this firsthand recently when I had the opportunity to ride along with Captain Megan Tuthill. Now, I've done ride-alongs before. I'm a medical doctor, so in medical school and during residency, I did ride-alongs, but this was different. I really had the opportunity to take a step back and just observe and watch EMS as caregivers and manage patients. And I just want to share an example of what I observed because it, it really struck me. During one of our first calls, we encountered an elderly woman who was ill and who didn't speak English. Her family was also non-English speaking. And luckily, one of the EMS personnel spoke her native language, Portuguese. And after some time and some back and forth, he determined that she needed to be transferred to the hospital. So as the team prepared him to prepare the patient to be transferred, it was clear that the daughter of the patient was really distressed. She had young children and therefore couldn't come to the hospital with her mother. So this was obviously and understandably upsetting to her. So instead of just carrying the patient away, EMS personnel stayed behind and they pulled her to the side and they spoke with her. And I have no idea what was said. Unfortunately, I don't speak Portuguese, but what I noticed is while they were talking to her, they held her hands. And it was that small act of holding her hands that visibly relieved her distress. And you could see it in her eyes, you could see it in her, her body language. Like I said, it's the little things that will make a difference and that confirm my belief that the people who work for Boston BM EMS are really some of the most committed and compassionate individuals that I've ever worked with. So one of my goals as Executive Director of the Boston Public Health Commission is to ensure that your commitment and your compassion are truly recognized. So I've said this before in multiple different sessions and I've probably said it to some of you. All Boston Public Health Commission staff and EMS personnel should feel valued. And of course, they should be well compensated. All of this for the incredibly challenging work that you do that's really critical. And we know that it's, this is important for recruitment and retention. So to EMS recruits and for those receiving promotion, my hope is that you continue to build a long-term career with Boston EMS and with the Boston Public Health Commission. I will certainly continue to support you. I will value you and I'll advocate on your behalf. Congratulations, thank you once again and best of luck. Oh, thank you, Dr. Wichikuru, for your uh, beautiful remarks. Uh, at this time, I just want to bring up our, our next speaker, who uh, you all been here six months. Uh, it was about a year ago you took office, right, Mayor? And uh, so she kind of knows what it's like to hit the ground running, to have to start uh, Literally, right? You guys are the first day at running, right? And everything else we put you through. Uh, and so she really appreciates what, what not just the, the, the job that you, in the profession that you've joined, but she has some real appreciation of what you, what's been going on for you for the last few, uh, few months. And uh, anyways, we're uh, very fortunate to have uh, May Wu here with us today. This is her second graduation that she's been able to uh, uh, attend and uh, be at, and we're very, very fortunate to have her here today. So it's uh, with great pleasure that I introduce our Mayor, Michelle Wu. Good morning, everyone. I am thrilled to see you all here uh, and just feeling so lucky to serve a city, 
as wonderful as ours, surrounded by leaders and public servants who pour so much into making sure that for our residents, it's a seamless, safe, healthy opportunity that everyone gets to live every day. And in terms of our, our city workers, just the level of care, as you heard, the level of attention to detail, the training that goes into this work, I have been blown away over the course of a year as to how many little details all fit together every single day and how much you all hold in your brains, in your hearts, um, and in your connections to community. We couldn't be more blessed to have the leadership here in Boston that we do. Chief Hooley is a gem who has given so many years to Boston and continues to help educate me on all that EMS needs and all that our communities need. He's a presence at so many neighborhood events throughout the city and beloved across our communities. Dr. Jakutu is a, a fearless, fearless trusted leader who is overseeing so many of our city's most important initiatives and doing so in a way that always centers our residents and the goals that we have to make sure that Boston leads the way for equity, for justice, and including everyone. Um, I'm really blessed that Bishop Dickerson is a partner on, on so many <laughs> different events and, and a, a counselor for me and uh, a wise mentor and, and guide for so many. Thank you so much for being here today. And Superintendent, we're so grateful for your leadership and um, all that you pour into preparing the next generation to serve and step up. Uh, I think I also saw our state representative uh, in the state rep, Brandy Fluger Oakley is here. Thank you, Rep, for joining us. Thank you for your leadership. And we have, in addition to our leaders here, uh, superintendents and command staff and captains and those who are getting promoted, I want to recognize the commissioner of the Boston Fire Department, Commissioner Paul Burke, is here as well. Thank you for all that you do for our city. So, I just want, before we get into the details, and everyone's going to have to get nervous about whether you trip coming down the up in the stairs and all of that, relax take a breath because you have earned every bit of this. And I want everyone in this room just to look up and around because not only are we here to do something incredibly special today, but we are gathered in a space that is almost sacred, a space that very few people across our country get to ever see, much less mark an important transition and milestone in their lives. This hall that we are in several hundred years old, represents truly the birthplace of our democracy. In the very seats that you are in, in the very spaces that all of our recruits and soon-to-be graduates will walk up in front of, 250 years ago, this is where we as a city and as a early, uh, soon-to-be nation laid out what it meant to dream for the future and to decide that you were gonna put it all on the line to serve your fellow community member. That is the legacy in Boston that we step into every single day. It is connected to the direction that this country has taken. It is connected to that dream and vision of growing ever more perfect in, in the hard work that continues to be needed for our democracy and our society. And it is so fitting that you all are the ones who get to breathe in the spirit and the air in this room and carry that forward in your work every single day. Chief Hooley mentioned that I'm now just a year and a week into the job. Uh, and meanwhile, those who are... <laughs> of the, uh, and just to put that in context, the 18 members of EMS whose promotions we are celebrating today represent 300 years of combined experience at EMS and serving our city. And for those uh, who are preparing to embark in this new role uh, as the only the second ever class I get to spend time with and, and uh, swear in, I am going to remember your faces and uh, this, this moment as, as a very special one for me as well. One of the biggest takeaways in my time here has been that there are so many things that go into keeping, keeping our city running. Big things like the budget and housing and ensuring that we are ready for whatever situations happen in, in the future in our schools and, um, and all of our streets. Details that sometimes people don't even notice, like how to salt the roads properly in the winter, fill potholes, make sure the trash and, and lights all, all work and, and fit together. A lot of things the city of Boston does that people don't notice at all or really think about. 
and you don't pay attention until we need them. Maybe a public trash can is full or the sidewalk is cracked, but it's, it's not an emergency and we will, we will take care of it. And there are so many city workers who work so hard to do so. But most times it's not life or death. You all are the exception to that. The job that you are stepping into as first responders, the sacrifice that you've already put into your training, the support that your families and loved ones have wrapped around you to serve right alongside you, all of you share an unwavering commitment to the health, safety, and well-being of our residents to step up and be those people who will always be there when needed, no matter what time of day, no matter what situation, no matter how much stress is on the minds of, of residents, you are trained and ready to be exactly who we need in our communities. Late one night four years ago, a teenager in Hyde Park needed you. He had just eaten a bag of chocolates his parents had brought back from a wedding. And almost immediately, he felt a tingling sensation in his lips that told him he was having an allergic reaction. A few minutes later, he was hit with a wave of nausea, his face and neck starting to swell, the tingling becoming an intense burning. He administered his EpiPen and told his mom to please call 911, though he could barely get the words out because his throat was closing up. The EpiPen seemed to work, but it, the effects quickly wore off, and within five minutes, he's had to use a second one on himself and then a third. And then, just as things are getting really scary, he sees the flashing lights. The EMTs from A18 help him onto a stretcher and give him oxygen. The last thing he remembers before losing consciousness is that the EMTs are calm, kind, that they explain to him and his mom, who's by his side, everything that they're doing. He ends up in the ICU for a week on a BiPAP with an IV in each arm, but he survives. That teenager's name is Mateo. Today he's a young man, alive and well, here in this room, ready to return the favor as one of the 19 incredible graduates joining the ranks of Boston EMS. Now, uh, to Mateo's dad, I know it, it can be tough. He chose EMS over Boston Fire, but we're all in the same family here. And um, we're thankful for your 36 years of service as well and uh, know that we're, we're all in it together. Um, so I don't want to just say congratulations today. You can feel, I can barely, I'm still crying from that story just hearing it. Um, I want to say thank you to everyone. Thank you to those of you who have earned your promotions, who are growing in your leadership to prepare the next generation, continue serving, and to continue serving the city in ever greater ways. Thank you to those who have spent your years getting ready for this moment, serving on the front lines of COVID when everyone else could stay safe at home. You were there serving our residents and saving lives. And thank you to all of you who have taken on six months of intense training for committing yourself to joining this incredible group to protect our communities and be there against any public health pandemic, against when substance use, violence, mental health, daily health challenges are affecting our residents, you are there. Thank you to the proud family members and friends who are here today. This is a tough job. And no one gets here to this moment without the support and help from those they love and who love them. And I also want to thank all those who support the Academy, all of our, our staff members there. To date, the department has stood up more than 40 COVID vaccine clinics, administered more than 2,300 vaccinations, cared for more than 9,000 COVID patients. EMS also became the first emergency medical service in the Commonwealth approved for mobile integrated healthcare emergency department diversion. Now, I know it's a mouthful, but it's a really big deal. It means that in partnership with Boston Medical Center's emergency services team, Boston EMS can transfer 911 behavioral health emergency calls directly to a behavioral health clinician, even shortening the time that we can connect people to the services and treatment they need. As a city, there is no higher priority than supporting the work that you all do. In the last year, we've approved 20 additional positions to staff frontline ambulances, four more to deploy a behavioral health alternative response unit, 
ensured that we can have funding for new vehicles and to replace essential medical equipment, and provided capital investment for a new station in the seaport, as well as a station and training facility in West Roxbury. These investments aren't just investments in EMS, they're investments in every single person in our city and in our communities. You represent all of our neighborhoods, and the time, training, and resources that we invest you always find their way back to our neighborhoods and to our communities. So congratulations, thank you again for always being there when we need you, for protecting and comforting and inspiring us, for saving lives and changing them. We are a stronger, safer, and better city because of you. Congratulations. Chief Hooley doing his job. I'm so sorry, I missed that. Councillor Lujan is here as well. Where is Rutsi? Rutsi, thank you so much for being here and for your leadership. Oh, and who else? Ah, Councillor Worrell. <laughs> okay, everyone's sneaking in. Thank you. As you can see, across the board, city, state, every level of government, we are so grateful for you, and I'm so proud to serve alongside these leaders. Thank, thank you, Mayor. That was terrific. Thank you very much. And uh, councilors also, thank you. Thank you for uh, your time and attending today and for your continued support that uh, we've received uh, from you. Uh, okay. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, Superintendent Jack Pearsall to the podium and to ask Captain Ken Skarner to assist with the presentation of badges. Today's badging presentation will start with the recent department promotions. When Superintendent PSO calls your name, please join us in the stage. And for those of you who may be accompanying up any of the promotees uh, to pin them, you can come up as well. Thank you, Chief. Promote to the rank of paramedic, Juan Rivas, to be pinned by his wife, Janice Rivas, and his son, Johnny James. Promoted to the rank of paramedic, Molly Palermo, to be penned by her husband, Paul Giannetti. To the rank of paramedic, Kaylee Conley, to be pinned by her mother, retired Boston EMS EMT, Kathleen O'Connor.
promoted to the rank of paramedic. Mark Irvin to be pinned by his father, Keith Irvin. to the rank of paramedic, Colin King, to be penned by his wife, Erin King. Promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Sean Alexander to be penned by his mother, Shell Myers. to rank of Lieutenant Elizabeth Remus to be pinned by her brother, Patrick Kelly. Promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Felicia Hickey to be penned by her mother, Constance Muhammad. Promoted to rank of lieutenant, Sarah Burke, to be penned by her son and daughter, Ryan Curry, and Aileen Doran.
promotes a rank of lieutenant, Kasim Zion, to be penned by his wife, Kimberly Zion. Promoters of rank of lieutenant, Dan Morgan, to be penned by his father, Dan Morgan Sr. Promoted to rank of lieutenant, Joseph Levin, to be penned by his daughter, Leeton Levin. Promoted to the rank of Deputy Superintendent, Thomas Finn, to be penned by his wife, Jessica Finn. Promoted to rank of uh, Deputy Superintendent is Tanya Divali, but unfortunately she's not here today, but we'd like to recognize the, uh, for, of a promotion to the rank of Deputy Superintendent. <laughs> Promoted to rank of Deputy Superintendent, Roger Hamlet, to be penned by his wife, Candace Hamlet. Promoted to the rank of Deputy Superintendent, Robert Barnes, to be penned by the Mayor, Mayor Wu.
forward to the rank of superintendent. Len Subotowski to be pinned by his daughter, Jenny Subotowski. Promoted to the rank of Superintendent Lee Alexander, pinned by her mother, Kara Drinkard. Congratulations to our newest promotees. At this time, I'd like to ask Mayor Michelle Wu to the podium again for the administration of the oath and the presentation of the badges for the class, the Academy Class 2022 1. Would, uh, would recruit class 2022-1 please rise for the administration of the Boston Missiles by Mayor Wolf. <clears throat> Okay, recruits, uh, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name, do solemnly swear. I that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And of the City of Boston. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I will serve my patients and the public with integrity and compassion. And I will afford respect equally to all. I will faithfully and impartially discharge all of the duties and responsibilities required of a City of Boston Emergency Medical Technician to the best of my abilities. I do so affirm, do so on, this 21st day of November, on this 21st day of November, in the year 2022. The year 2022. Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Wu. Recruits, you may be seated. We will now start with the badge presentations. Michelle Boucher to be pinned by our son, Trey. 
Prelo. Andrew Cosano, to be penned by his spouse, Janice Cosano. Madison declared to be penned by her fiance, Tiana Lomax. Nora Downley, to be penned by her boyfriend, Timothy, Timothy Sheehan. Daphne Dudley to be penned by, his girl, by her girlfriend, Felicia Fogoni. Laura Engel to be penned by the EMT of the Year for 2018, <laughs> lead, lead FTO, Mike Regan. <laughs> Samuel Gartley to be penned by his mother, Candace Gartley.
Daniel Kajajian to be penned by his goddaughter, Allison McCarthy. Kim to be penned by his mother, Shell Griffith. Casey Knowles, we pinned by our father, Christopher Knowles. Alice LeBlanc to be penned by boyfriend Phoenix Williams. Mateo Martinez to be pinned by his father, retired Boston firefighter, Wilfredo Martinez. Peter Moschio to be penned by his girlfriend, Lena Shaley. Rebecca Muse, to be penned by our father, Raymond Muse.
Liam Norton to be penned by his mother, Joanne Norton. Sharu Sararian to be penned by Captain Edmund Burke. Igor Strunen to be penned by Captain Kent Skarner. David Thompson, Jr., to be penned by his father, retired Boston firefighter, David Thompson, Sr. Jennifer Volker, to be then by her boyfriend, Justin Kekar. Thank you, Superintendent Pearsall. The former recruits were asked to nominate a class speaker who best exemplifies the enthusiasm, focus, teamwork, perseverance, and what it takes to be successful in this academy and as a member of this department. They selected EMT Michelle Boucher. First, let's all stay by. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Just want everyone to know how nervous I am. 
Every so often in our lifetimes, a few of us manage to come across someone extraordinary. I am here today, surrounded by not one, but 18 extraordinary men and women that I am proud to call my classmates of 22-1. I would like to start off by thanking our family, friends, and loved ones for supporting us throughout the Academy and for making countless sacrifices so we can be here today. It goes without saying, we couldn't have done it without you. I would like to personally thank 22-1, our lead field training officers and captains included. It is because of all of you that I am able to stand here before you. Words alone will never be enough to truly thank each and every one of you. Ohana means family, family means no one left behind. Since we started this process, these last seven months have been filled with a whirlwind of emotions. We had our ups and downs, Many tears were shed, many laughs were had, but most importantly, many memories were made. Memories that will last a lifetime. Our mornings began by climbing six flights of stairs with our brown bags, <laughs> filled with equipment, first in bags, book bags, and uniforms. And if that climb wasn't bad enough, we then had physical training. And let me tell you, when I started the academy, I couldn't even squat. <laughs> Physical training could be rigorous, including when there was dancing involved, <laughs> dancing led by our lead field training officers. <laughs> our class model, strength, teamwork, and determination was evident every day, day in and day out. We gave each other the strength we needed to move forward after a rough day. We worked together on any and every task given, and we were determined that we all made it here today. Many lessons were learned during the academy, like making sure you thoroughly check the green bag, otherwise you'll find a can of beans in it. <laughs> you may have also found beans strategically placed in a pyramid in front of your truck. Just ask LFTO Morgan. We learned that we can ask LFTO Regan anything, but also not to ask him anything. <laughs> LFTO Zion, the misses, we learned how a simple dance can be not so simple. And from LFTO Zion, the mister, we learned patience because man, we're his tested. <laughs> the one thing we never learned was what LFTO Ikasalo keeps in his shirt pocket. <laughs> As we each go off on our own in this department, I am excited to see what we all amount to. This group is special. I know that each and all of us will continue to impact those of us, especially our patients, who I know we are in this all for the long haul. There's something very humbling to see people on their worst days, and yet it's very rewarding to be able to leave some shred of sunshine for them to grab onto. That is what 22-1 has always been so good at, leaving sunshine everywhere we go. So in closing, I wish you all a safe, healthy and rewarding career here at Boston EMS. I hope we all stay true to ourselves, never forgetting where it all started. And Madam Mayor, it is with my honor I present to you the shirt, hopefully semi-clean. <laughs> we put our sweat and tears into this, and it is my honor to present this to you. Thank you. Thank you. And one last time before we go, 22-1, class dismissed.
Thank you, EMT Boucher. <laughs> well, I would like to invite Superintendent Len Shubatowski to join me on stage to officially mark the transition of recruit class 2022-1 from our academy to the assignment and field operations by logging on the class with dispatch operations. C3 calling dispatch operations. Dispatch operations answering C3. Boston 3, C3, request to make a brief announcement. Boston C3, would you please log on to graduates of Recruit Class 2022-1. They have completed their assignment at the Academy and are now assigned to field operations at Boston EMS. We wish them good luck and Godspeed. All right, would, you, would everyone please rise for the retiring of the colors? Thank you, Honor God, and thank you, everyone, for joining us here today. This concludes our ceremony. Have a great day.